Amen. Good evening. You can be seated. Praise God for his goodness. Hallelujah. For his glory, for his truth, for his righteousness, for his peace, for his joy, for his oneness, for his goodness, for his faithfulness. That's my favorite word for him. He's just faithful. We give God the glory. Amen. I'm giving honor to the angel of this house, Bishop Daniel Robertson, Jr., my daddy, and his beautiful, faithful, powerful, unstoppable, I could go on and on, his wife, co-pastor, my mama, your mama, I'm telling you, we're sitting under something, and I'm going to say it right now, if you fix your feet to move from this place, you a fool. I said it. I said it. Amen. Come on, give it up for him. Thank God for the man of God and the woman of God. We love you, Bishop. Praise God, co-pastor, and we thank God for you. Amen. Be seated. I want to share um, with you what God gave to me, and I really want you, I, my prayer is that you walk away from this bad boy with biceps that you did not have in the spirit when you came, with triceps and glutes, and what all that they do when they, when they uh, I pray you walk out of here and say, man, you know what? I'm strong in the Lord. We already learned my praise is a weapon, so you already have what it takes. Amen. The Lord said to me about a month ago, I want to share a dream. I wish I didn't have all these papers, but I'm going to be like my dad one day and just shoot straight, you know, from the hip. But right now, Bishop, I'm still just like him, you know. I just, he just don't have all these notes and stuff. Amen. The Lord told me about a month ago, I had a dream. And I'm going to tell you about the dream. He said, at the end of the dream, when I woke up and I came to, he said, it's not a battle. It's just a fight. Let it sink in. It's not a battle. It's just a fight. And then he said to me, the battle is over. And you have the victory. That's all. There's nothing else to say. There's nothing else to discuss. There's no, but, but, but what about the battle is over. So there's no battle. So quit walking around talking about I'm in a battle. You're not in a battle. Jesus took care of all of that long ago. So we are not in a battle. It's just a fight. And there's good news with just the fight. And I'm going to explain to you what I mean by that. So I woke up from this dream about a month ago. And I wrote my notes down when I first had the dream because it was so powerful and so surreal. You ever have those dreams when you wake up, it feels like you're right there still? And I felt like I was right there. And when I woke up from this dream about a month ago uh, where I was in a hazy place, it was, there was haze. There was kind of an orangish brown cloudiness. And I was having a fight with the devil. It was no mistake. Well, who is that? And I was in a fight with the devil. It was just as clear as I'm sitting looking at all of you tonight. And I stood about three feet away from him. And we were battling. We were engaged. Do you hear what I'm saying? You hear me, Elder May? We, we were duking. And during the fight, I was always on a higher ground than, than the enemy. That was the thing that I noticed. I was always up on a higher ground. So I was fighting, but I was fighting down low because he was low and I was high. Clear as I'm talking to you. His face, listen to this. 
His face, face was so bloody and disfigured as if he was in a boxing ring. His evil eyes were swollen shut. Clearly, I was winning this fight. The enemy, look at this, was at least seven feet tall. And you could tell that at one time, he was muscular, like when he was in the army of God's angels. You could tell that he had that. You ever see somebody that maybe in their younger days, they was real and buffed and all. And then when they got, you know, when they kind of stopped, you could still kind of see the muscles, but they were just kind of sagging. This joker's muscles were, I'm telling you, they were sagging. He's about seven feet tall, and you could tell that, like I said, at one time he was in God's army of angels. Um, but he had gotten out of shape. And he had a Roman iron uh, of armor on him, but it was all rusty. Can you imagine? And dusty. And, he, and, and, and his skirt, you know how they have the Roman skirts and they have this little, he had two or three shingles missing. Like a, like a missing tooth. I'm telling you, that joker was jacked up. But God let me see it. So a piece of his uh, panels were missing, assistant pastor. And, and uh, he, he tried to stand erect, you know, like in the status that he used to have. He tried to, you know, stand up, but he couldn't stand up. He was hunched over and he was halfway over. And, and then he had a, a samurai sword. Okay? I'm telling you, word for word, as soon as I woke up, I started writing. He had this samurai sword in his hand, but the sword was dull. Get this. And completely rusty. But he still thought he was working with something. And as long as you believe he is, guess what? I said to him, put that sword down. I said it just like that. As if to remind him that he is not a warrior nor a champion. But you look in that one. And then I told him, Shamane, I said, get out of my face. And I was indignant, and I, I, and I had righteous indignation because in that dream, I knew who I was, and I know who I am right now. So I began to ascend to another mountain that was slightly higher than the one that we were on, okay? My God. I thought I had beat him enough to a pulp that he wouldn't follow me. So I leaped up on the next higher mountain and I turned around and there he was. And I turned around and looked as if to say, what are you doing here? Didn't I tell you? But he was relentless. And but I, he wanted more so I commenced to beating him <laughs> like I ain't even, I can't even tell you. You, you can almost feel, you never see somebody getting beat halfway to death, like in a fighting ring, and you want the opponent to say, okay, okay, can't you see? He can't even, I mean, I was whipping on that joker. So when my eyes had opened from the dream, I was in a deep stare lying in my bed, and I didn't feel fearful, but I felt unstoppable. I felt like an avenger, one who was defending the truth. And this is when God declared these words, it's not a battle, it's a fight. It's not a battle. Look at somebody, tell them, it's not a battle. I know sometimes it feels like a battle, but it's not a battle, but it is a fight. The fight, may I add, is fixed. Because the one who finished the battle also won the fight for you and for me. It's 
She might say, well, what am I fighting for? Why am I always fighting? I don't know. Why are you fighting? What you fighting for? The Bible doesn't tell you to fight. The Bible says stand. You can, you know how they do. But you don't have to swing. That's why you're so tired in the spirit. Because you're fighting a fight that has already been won. I'm telling you, Minister Moses, that dream was so surreal. I said, my God, I'm whooping up on Satan like this. The archangel, I'm off of the dream now. I'm just going to read a statement out of uh, Watchman Nee's uh, book, De uh, uh, Delegated Authority, I think it is. The archangel turned into Satan when he tried to override God's authority and tried to complete, or I'm sorry, tried to compete with God. Thus, he became an adversary of God. Rebellion is not only a sin, get this now, principle of Satan. A principle of Satan. And rebellion is the thing that caused him to fall. Rebellion, rebellion is more of a matter of conduct than it is, oh, I rebelled, Lord, forgive me, I sinned. I rebelled again, Lord, forgive me, I sinned. No, rebellion is a way, is a conduct, is a, is a, is, is a way that one behaves. So we need to talk a little bit about rebellion so that when you're standing, you won't be harmed you won't be affected by what the enemy is trying to do. He can't do it unless you let him. He's trying to do it. But we're going to learn how we are winners every single time. As children of God, now listen to this. As children of God, we must not violate authorities. Teach slow. I'm going to be on time. I'm going to be finished on time too, but we're going to get this tonight. Because the Lord said to me, this is why so many born again Christians are tired in the spirit because they're fighting and they're not standing and they're not standing because they don't know who they are. They don't, they're not standing because they don't know who they represent and they're not standing because sometimes in everyday life, they're not submitting to authority, even delegated authority, no matter what it is. How many has ever parked in a, yeah, you laughing, uh-huh, in a handicapped parking lot and want nothing more wrong with you than the man on the moon? Come on, let's shame the devil. Do you know that's delegating authority? And you might say, well, that little thing will keep me from standing. Yes. I got a parking ticket. Or the toll wouldn't take my money and I got tired of, so I just zoom. Authority. God, the Bible says that God has placed authority. Wherever you see authority, God has put that in position. That's not for you to say, well, I don't, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this part, but I'm not going to do that part. And then we wonder why... It's hard for us to stand. It's hard for us to feel like we're winning, but we're not submitted to authority. Remember the centurion man? Remember he said, God, just speak the word. And, and Jesus said, I ain't never seen faith like this in all the land. He said, because this man is telling me to, to this man is telling, Jesus was telling him, go and I'll heal him. But then he said, the centurion said, if you speak the word, he'll already be healed. What happened? He understood authority. He came under authority. He was a man in authority, but he came under authority so that his authority would work. Get it now. Watchman Nee was talking about Power versus authority. Do you know there's a difference? Lord, I'm trying to stay on these notes the way I laid them out, but he's, he's just, this is where we're going. Do you know there's a difference? 
Do you know you can have a gun without a permit and without a license, and if you fire that gun, it has power, and it could harm somebody? Because you have a weapon that can be fired and that can induce potential harm to someone. But then the repercussions to that is, Pastor Brown, you could show enough go to jail too. Now, if you take somebody that has a license or a permit, let's use the police for this, uh, in this instance, who has the right to hold this weapon, and not only the right to hold this weapon, but he has the right to fire this weapon should he come into a situation where he would need to use the weapon. That's why he has the weapon. Now, he can't, he's not going to go around, if he got any sense, just firing at any and everybody. That would be the one without the permit. But the one who has the ability and has the license to hold the gun knows what to do with the gun, knows when to do with the weapon, knows how to handle it, knows how to clean it, knows how to put it in the holster and put it away when it's not needed, knows how not to draw it on someone when it's not necessary because they have a license to have this weapon. Jesus went to hell and made a show of the devil openly, didn't he? Triumphing over, I mean, I mean, it was a show. I won't dare, but I've been told <laughs> that he made a show of him. I want to read it in the Bible real quick. Praise God. Let's start first with Isaiah 14. We're going to talk about how the enemy fell. Just in case somebody's like, eh, I don't know. He seemed like he got some kind of power to me. Let me tell you, honey, he ain't got no more power than the power you give him. Isaiah 14 and 9. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. Is stirreth up the dead for thee. Hallelujah, my God. Even all the chief ones of the earth, it has raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. And they shall speak and say unto thee, Thou art, I'm sorry, art thou also become weak as we? I told you he weak. Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials, the worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? It seemed like they were saying, bro, how, what you doing down here? How, how, how did that happen? O oh, Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou cut down? Look at that. He's weak and he's cut down. I told you. To the ground which didst weaken the nations. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Mm. And then Jesus in Luke chapter 10. Let's look at that real quick. Chapter 10, verse 18. He said, and he said unto them, I beheld. That means I saw with my own two eyes, or four eyes, or how many eyes you got. I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold. So with them same eyes that you saw him fall with, now look and see that I give unto you power. See, it's, it's legal now. You understand? You see, you have a license now. 
You're not like that person that didn't have a permit, didn't have a gun, and just going firing bullets everywhere. Jesus said, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Do I have someone that's starting to believe it now? Just a little bit, just a little bit. Hallelujah. But see, when we began to turn away from authority, or when we begin to ignore authority. Now, I, I want you to bring it into church, because I, I know none of y'all are running red lights on purpose. Not on purpose, so we're not out there breaking the law. But there's a lot of law being broken right within the four walls. I'm talking about authority. Okay. I know the Holy Ghost gave me this message, so you can say amen, or you can say oh me. But when God sets delegated authority in the house, no matter who it is, your only thing to do, you don't worry about nothing else. The only thing you need to do is obey. Mm. Then you wonder why your, your, your peace ain't working, see. You go to click that that weapon, and, and you cock it. That's what they say. You cock it, and you get ready to aim it at the enemy and shoot it, and you click, and it click, click, click. <laughs> click, 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 click. Now, I know I loaded it early in my quiet time. Any authority, we need to submit. Don't worry about fixing it if it's wrong, because God, God's trying to see what you going to do. I got this. Didn't he ha handle Satan? Didn't he handle him? I mean, he handled that joker. He didn't come and ask for none of our help, but he handled the enemy. You know how he said, oh, you ain't finna handle me. He handled the devil. So when it comes to authority, listen to this. Anytime you, you, you decide, I'm going to turn away from any type of authority, because it's the principle of Satan. Remember, it's his principle. That's the thing that got him kicked out. So how, tell me how are you going to go in the, it's just, it's just not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. You have to make sure, okay, God, everything, every one, every whatever I'm under, I'm, I am lining myself up. I don't have nothing to do over here. I don't have nothing to do with this over here. I don't have, let me tell you, God will defend you and he will make sure that you come out smelling like a rose. Because if you want a part of it, guess what? Don't worry about it. Just follow the leader. See, because when you need your weapon, you want it to work. Don't you, Elder Catherine? I mean, I want my stuff to work. I don't want to find myself in a situation that I go to aim and I don't have no power. Remember, we only fight to bring God glory and no other reason. So you might say, well, if the battle is won and we already have the victory in the fight, then why am I fighting? You're not fighting, you're standing. You're standing, according to Ephesians 6 and 10, right? After having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, having the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, the helmet of salvation, and the boots of truth. So stand, you don't have to swing. When you swing, the enemy's over here. <laughs> and you're swinging again. And you're tired in the spirit because you're wrestling against flesh and blood. I know this is a word this, this evening. 
we don't have to fight with our mouth. We ask God to place his hand over our mouth. God, set a watch. I try to say it every morning. Set a watch across my mouth. Lord, help me, Father. Help me put a guard, Lord, there. So I don't step outside the licensure that Jesus fought for and paid for so diligently and transferred it to me. Help me. Somebody say, help me, Father. Now remember, the battle has already been won, but the fight is fixed. So you still win. If you stand, what are some of the ways that you get wobbly? Just picture yourself in a, in a boxing ring. Are you seeing, y'all seen Rocky and all of these, you know, and you see how it seems like one is getting the best and then another one comes up? I tell you, if you stand, what do you mean stand? You mean, Elder, oh, I'm just supposed to stand there and take it? Stand there and take my family being all jacked up? Stand there and just take my finances, you know, a muck, stand there and just take, you know, all it. I'm supposed to stand there. You don't want me to swing. See, when you swing, that denotes you fighting in the flesh. But when you stand, you're fighting in the spirit. See, Satan don't want you to know that little secret. He wants you to keep on swinging, keep on sweating, keep on crying. Keep on falling, getting back up, keep on watching people whoosh, pass you, whoosh, and he's standing there laughing at you. Why? Because you're not using your weapon properly. My, my, is, any, is this helping anybody? Hallelujah. See, because when you keep throwing those blows, you get exhausted. And after a while, you're going to want to give up. You're going to go back to the corner. And it's okay to go back and, 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 and get your water and get your ice and get all, get all fixed up. It's so even okay if you fall sometime, but get back up. Don't sit there. Don't stand there until they count to 10. You hear them counting. You can count, can't you? You know in the spirit what's happening. Why are you just laying there? The fight is already fixed. Come on, somebody. The fight is already fixed. Remember, it's not a battle. Because, see, that was the big thing. Satan already been whipped. He don't want you to remember that. So he wants you to fight back in the flesh. Oh, I'm going to call her, honey. What? She said, what? They did what? You're popping out, taking your shoes off and pop. Oh, it's, a, it's going down. And the enemy behind you, uh-huh. And, and there you go swinging, and he goes in a corner somewhere laughing. Remember, as we fight, we bring glory to God, and for no other reason, we don't fight. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. The Bible says, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against what? Spiritual wickedness. Where are they? In high places. We down low fighting. And the fight is in a whole nother realm. We've got to remain in the supernatural if we are going to take a stand. The Bible says, stand therefore in the liberty. The stand. They say stand. Stand therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. Who knows the rest of that? And be not entangled again. That means you used to be. You used to call them up and give them a piece of your mind. But don't go back to that foolishness. Fight in the spirit. That is where the battle has already been won. Oh, my God. I had a picture in my head, and I was thinking, what would happen if a boxer got into the ring to fight knowing, already knowing that he already won? 
You know how they take the ropes. I can't do it because I'm a lady. You know how they take them ropes and they climb over them ropes? It's like, I already know that I won. So let me come in here with my shoulders squared, with my head up because it's already done. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. It doesn't matter if you go to round one, round five, round seven, round 10, it's already done. You don't even have to try to knock the enemy out. <laughs> and then the last thing, as you stand there against your opponent, I don't know why, he just crazy. He just keep on getting in the ring. Make sure that you study your opponent. Now, I don't mean in the natural. How am I going to study my opponent? Well, let me look back at my family history. Let me look back at some of these generational curses. Let me find out with this demon that's trying to fight me who he's trying to, who he already tried to defeat before me. Where's that spirit of alcoholism? That's who I want to get. Where's that drug addiction? Where's that whoredom? Where's that gambling spirit? I'm not finna fight gambling if in my family we used to having babies out of wedlock. Well, what I'm going over here fighting gambling when that's not my problem. So you want to examine you want to look at your opponent. You want to make sure that you know what he's working with. And in the event you should miss something, Elder Jones, the Holy Spirit will reveal to you. Now watch over here. Here comes a swing from the bottom because he don't play fair. And then he'll have one of your children or your grandchildren or your mama or your uncle to touch you in a wrong way. Some old foolish, crazy stuff like that. Because see, he don't never come toe to toe. He never comes eye to eye. He come way around this way. But see, getting back to submitting to authority, if you don't submit to authority, he going to swing and he going to land every single time. Oh, it's a word from heaven. I promise you. I promise you. I promise you. We've been fighting in the wrong way. We've been fighting. We've been fighting. We've been swinging. We have not been standing. And God said, I want you to stand tonight. Oh, hallelujah. So you got to go back. You got to go back. You got to go back and you got to face those generational curses. I know you don't like it. I know you don't want to remember what was done to you. I know you don't want to look at some of the bad things that had happened to you. But you, it's not you. You're looking at the enemy in the eye. And you're going to say, look at here, Joker. Jesus already whipped you once. And guess what? He is the heavyweight champion, hallelujah, of the world. And it doesn't stop there, but you know that big old pretty belt with all the jewels and all the insignias and everything that's on it? Jesus took his belt off on my name, Mo Shandiara, and he gave it to me. And I'm just going, I'm just going to swing back my coat in the spirit. And I want you to see what I'm working with, Satan. This is the same belt that Jesus went to hell and snatched away from you along with the keys. And I am victorious. I am a winner. No weapon formed against me will prosper. It doesn't matter what you do, Satan. The battle is already won and I have the victory. Oh, shout it. I have the victory. Say it again. I have the victory. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe it? I know Bishop once said that we got to stand and we've got to fight. Like the word said, the good fight of faith. Because what's on your life, God is not going to look at you and go, oh, poor boy. Let me take the plans that I have for you and let me reduce them to where they'll fit your little faith. Aww. That ain't happening. 
Jesus went to a place that none of us could go. So he went for us. And how awesome and wonderful is that is, that somebody would go win, win the belt, if you will. And they say, no, I'd like to give it to you. I'd like to give it to you because I love the Father and the Father loves you. I'd like to give it to you because before I went to Calvary, before I died, before I said in the garden, nevertheless, before that, God knew you and he had you in mind. So you are a champion. You are wearing, hallelujah, the, the heavyweight, the undefeated. I said the undefeated. You are the undefeated champion of the world. Satan don't like to hear you say that. And he hates that I had that dream, but I hope, I hope you hold on to that dream. I remember Bishop once said about Antonio Thomas, the late Antonio, he said, he said to him once, don't ever allow someone to be around you who don't know who you are. In other words, know who you are. Know who the people are around you. Don't be having nobody shout from the corner of the ring in your ear. Do you know who that is yelling out at you? Get him, get him. And as soon as you back up and your eye is bloody and, 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 and slob dripping and all, they going whispering about you. You better watch who you hang around. You better watch who's hollering at you from the arena of the spirit. You better make sure, because everybody, I'm saying it, y'all, I'm saying if it ain't you, it ain't you. But I'm saying that everybody's not your friend. Everybody doesn't want you to win. Do you know Satan has some people that he's lined up to go and try to make you lose, make you swing like he's swinging? Mm. Uh, who was it? Paul I know. And Jesus I know. But wear your badge. Wear your badge. These guys over here, they strapped in the Holy Ghost and they, but who are you? My God, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Use that weapon. Jesus paid for it. My God, he paid for it. And if you want it to work, hallelujah, when you need it the most, you need to submit. It doesn't matter who it is. Don't matter, don't matter, don't matter. It don't matter who it is. As long as they're not telling you to sin and do wrong, come over here, take a puff of this. I don't mean that. But if your question is kind of like, eh, just go ahead and submit and watch Jesus fix it and put it all together. Because you need for that weapon to work. Because the battle is not against anybody in this room. But it's against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. I just wonder. I wonder who would be honest and say, you know what? Yeah, I've been swinging. I, 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 I've, I've been trying to win this fight and I've been swinging and my arms are tired and I'm out of breath in the spirit and I want to come before the Lord right now. Perhaps my weapon is not working as it should be. I'm not declaring that you've been disobedient or insubmissive or that you've done anything wrong. But if you, I'm telling you, we're winners. We're winners. We're winners. We don't lose. We don't lose. We never lose. Even when it seems like you're losing, you don't lose. Because the battle is won and you have the victory. So you don't have to, like Paul said, be beaten at the air. You are a winner. You're a winner. You're a winner. Jesus made it so. And I want you to come up here and I want you to stop caring about who's looking at you, doggone it. I want you to stop caring about what somebody's going to say or how this is going to pan out tomorrow. The devil is a liar. I already told you. 
Yes, and no weapon, no weapon, no weapon, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It's a shame to have a weapon and no ammunition. What's the purpose? It's just collecting dust and it can never be used. Hallelujah. 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 I need some oil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I want you to get in your spirit because this has nothing to do with me making contact with you. I'm just coming in agreement if your faith is at the place where it needs to be to remind you that you are a winner. So position yourself, take a stand against the enemy and let him know, I know who I am. I know that I've got the victory. I may have heard it time and time over, but now just as sure as I'm born, I know that Jesus defeated the enemy and gave me the belt of truth. And I stand in it and I am an avenger for the truth. And I will not take down and allow you, Satan, to whip up on my family, whip up on my consciousness, whip up on my business, whip up on my bank account, whip up on my home, my children, my children's children. I'm not gonna let you do it. Why? The battle is over. And I have the victory.